In the consumer market, Hyundai is often overshadowed by Japanese manufacturers, and this 2009 Sonata GLS is a perfect example as to why that is. To explain my reasoning, I'd like to briefly touch on the previous generations. Second and third gen Sonatas had a detuned, naturally aspirated 4G63. It wasn't hard to make this into a little Evo, considering it had the same engine. But by the fifth gen, all we got was this. This is the 2.4 liter, 175 horsepower 4-cylinder named the Theta 2. Fun fact, this engine was made by Chrysler, Mitsubishi, and Hyundai, a collaboration so bad you'd think it was made by a high school teacher making random groups for classwork. But unlike most collaborative projects, severe incompetence unnecessarily put lives at risk. The Theta 2s are the Hyundai engines that were catching fire last year, with about 2 million cars being recalled, and subsequently re-recalled when the first one did this. I'll get back to recalls in a bit, but for now, this car wasn't included. But fires aside, this is a pretty bog-standard engine. There's an itty bit of mid-range power, but outside of that, it's a basic commuter. Nothing really exciting to talk about. Without any top-end power, the engine really doesn't like high revs, so it's best just to stay in the mid-range. Third gear at 3k is the only spot with power. It's very weird. I don't think this is underpowered because I think this is the proper amount of horsepower a commuter should have. It's far from quick, but it's fast enough to take itself out of danger. The real worst part is the fuel efficiency. It's pretty bad. No matter how I drive, I can't seem to get over 18 miles per gallon. Not that great for a naturally aspirated 4-banger. I I'm sure the transmission isn't helping either. It's a 5-speed auto that shifts whenever it feels like it. There's a delay when you want to shift it yourself, and when you let the TCU do its thing, it feels like the gear is determined by RNG. But all this is fine. Here's my game theory. The target demographic for these cars were non-enthusiasts who are never going to push the engine past 3000 RPM. They don't know that the car can't handle, and it doesn't matter anyway because they're never going to get into a situation where the car is going to understeer. But the deciding factor for a lot of non-enthusiasts is the interior, and that's where Hyundai put the money into. But just like the engine, there's a lot of issues in here as well. For example, these switches had to get replaced, the radio screen does this shit at random, and the USB port never worked. But in return, it's... It is kind of comfy. The plastics don't press in and squeak when you touch them, the radio controls are intuitive, the seats are comfy, and the speakers are pretty good. Let's go back to reliability. Hyundai gets away with bad build quality issues by offering America's best warranty, covering 10 years, 100,000 miles. This car is at 113,000 miles, and exactly as expected, the car shit itself like the second the warranty expired. The second I got it, the evap canister died for the third time in a year, and after getting that fixed, the interior suddenly smelled like gas fumes, meaning I had an exhaust leak, cause of course. Next, this brake seized, destroying my rotor and caliper in the process. Apparently this is a common problem for NF Sonatas. The paint's also pretty bad, with large chunks coming off like this and eventually just rusting. I had no idea that this was a common problem for Sonatas, but I mean, I guess I'm learning a lot here. It's pretty obvious that I've put a lot of work into this car besides the manufacturer defects. After getting into an accident, I decided on trying to fix it myself, even though I really had no idea what I was doing. After looking up how to open the hood, I used a hand wrench to take the entire bumper off. That alone took about three hours, but eventually I was able to do the entire job myself with only the help of YouTube tutorials and a friend that showed me what a ratchet was. Thanks, dude. So why the hell did I fix this? It would have been so much simpler just to buy a new, better car, and frankly, a CRX would have been an awesome replacement. Well, to be honest, memories. It's a rolling memory of senior year, a whole 165 days of doing absolutely nothing. And yeah, the resale value is totally gone, but a car worth more than metal is lasting me through two schools and four jobs, and maybe I'm just a pussy, but I can't bring myself to hate a car that I've spent so much time in. Don't get me wrong, this is not a very good car. It's slow, unreliable, and swallows gas like cats swallow their own fur. Hell, honestly, it's not even that great in the snow. I'm sure some of that is due to the bald tires, but last winter they still had plenty of tread and the car still felt like running on tile with socks on. It's very easy to drive, making it a good first car, but there isn't anything it does better than Honda or Toyota, and it's way less reliable. I honestly can't recommend this. If you already have one of these, chances are that you're already saving up for an upgrade. But for now, why not make some memories with it? Maybe you look back and realize that apart from the paint, the engine, the electronics, and everything else, that you've enjoyed the car. Or not, I don't know. And you know what? That's what I'm gonna leave it to. 